to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen, and the subject of today's newsletter, well, we're gonna talk about the seven quality tools. I'm actually only going to use six of them in this little example but uh, the seventh one could be in there as well. We'll talk about that in a second but uh, we're going we're gonna to take a look at the seven quality tools and how you can just use them in the most powerful way to get your process capability exactly where you want it to be and this is how the seven quality tools should be used. So we're going to suggest that we have a um, we have a problem, we have a process capability, we have a CPK, we have a CPK that's not right. Yeah, so we're making we're making defects. By the way, the quality tool that we might be used to to get there of the seven, we might have decided to use the Pareto and that this is our biggest this is our biggest problem. So that's the that's the seventh tool that I'm not going to use in this little example. But let me show you now the seven quality tools in action. Okay, let's start. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take some data from the process. At least 50 data points. Okay, at least 50 data points. And I'm going to start quality tool number one. I'm going to do a run chart. I want to see if there's any trends or movement, anything that's wild about my process. What's the, what's the data telling me? And by the way, if you want to make more money than any other tool, get yourself a piece of paper and plot a graph because that's the fastest way to make cash in your business. So. We're going to take a look. There's a little example here, look. We're going to take a look at the data. I'm going to just put a run chart in there. And you can see that the process is just bouncing around uh, like a random number generator. But the center of the process is not moving. So there's a nice, a nice center of the process. The process is very stable in that sense. So there's the run chart. So run chart. Then the next tool I'm going to use, well, we're going to use the histogram. So now, quality tool number two, we're going to use the histogram. Now what I want to see if there are any other patterns in the data apart from a normal distribution, which should be there, by the way. A normal distribution is a good sign of a process behaving in, in a controlled way, not chaotically. So we're gonna we're gonna run the histogram. So I'm gonna take the same data set look. And I'm gonna generate a histogram. Now the software I'm using in this case, I'm using SPC Excel. And here's the histogram look. 
it's a nice normal distribution there's a few there's a few data points out to the left there a few flyers but apart from that a nice normal distribution why did I draw that well I wanted to know that the normal distribution was there for the next tool I'm going to use because the next tool is the CPK diagram so we've gone run chart histogram CPK now what's this going to do well this predicts the true defect rate it predicts the defect rate it's not an observed defect rate so here we go look I'm going to generate a CPK for that data set and you can see the defect rate 44,000 defects in a million that's a prediction it's not an observed value and because I know that the normal distribution is strong in the data because I looked at it in the histogram I know that prediction is going to be very good okay so we've got run chart histogram CPK now then what's the CPK telling me well it's telling me I have too much variability I have rejects hanging out the ends so I've got this shape where I've got data hanging out the ends and what I need to do I need to reduce the variability push that distribution in and get rid of my defect rate okay now which tool am I going to use for this well now we're going to go flow diagram to help me go through every step of the process cause and effect diagram what's the cause and effect diagram going to find me well what I'm going to do is of course I'm going to identify I'm going to identify all the input variables all the input variables and I'm going to reduce the variability I'm going to control as much of that variability as I can as I do that I'm going to squeeze my CPK in okay so now what I do I prove the process and I get rid of my get rid of my defect rate okay so we've gone one two three four five there's the sixth one up there now the seventh quality tool statistical process control S P C because once I've got the control plan now I can add an SPC chart control limits by the way these are control limits they are not specification limits most important now that I've got a control chart and a control plan to work to so the process here so when I get an out of control limit what do I do I audit the control plan it's very simple so what you've done is you've got seven quality tools you've got the process under control you've locked the controlling with SPC you've created a control plan when you did the cause and effect diagram by the way you should have done all of this anyway at new product introduction what you're doing here by the way is tidying up a mess that you created because you implemented a new product in a half-assed way but if you'd have done an FMEA properly in the first place the FMEA would have generated the control plan you wouldn't be doing this project but anyway we've used the, the seven quality tools in order we've got the SPC linked to the control plan we get an outer control uh, point on the SPC chart what do we do we simply audit the controls and when we find the one that's no longer correct we correct it in other words we put it back to standard we don't adjust the process that's not allowed yeah SPC is not permission 
to fiddle about with settings. What we're going to do, we're going to find out the control signal, we're going to audit the controls, the one that's gone wrong, we will correct it. We'll put it back to standard. And there is the seven quality tools. And if you do that, your operators will be able to sit back, drink tea, read the paper and count the cash. If you'd like to know more about how to use the seven quality tools correctly, please buy my book. It's called Drink Tea and Read the Paper and you can learn how to use the seven quality tools to pretty much fix any technical problem in your company and make piles and piles of cash. Thank <laughs> you.